Hey guys, my name is Jaime. I am a registered respiratory therapist and I practice in Houston, Texas currently. And with everything happening with COVID-19, I just wanted to put together a series of things that people can do from home, home therapies for treatment of respiratory illness in the event that you're not able to be admitted to a hospital. These are things that you can do for you or your family members at home, okay? So full disclaimer, I am not a physician, I am not a doctor, I am not an MD, I am a respiratory therapist, and I am the one who fulfills the doctor's orders and provides the supportive care and therapy that patients need while they're in the hospital overcoming their respiratory illness, okay? So these are just my personal recommendations and um, information that I think is gonna be very useful in this instance. Okay, so respiratory illness as a whole, when you first start having symptoms, you may experience the fever, the body aches, the dry cough, in some instances, nausea, vomiting. The, the symptom I really want to kind of make stand out to most people is the shortness of breath. In this case with COVID-19, people who experience shortness of breath, no matter their age, no matter their comorbidities, should seek medical intervention should call their primary care physician. And if not, go to the emergency room, okay? So I wanna talk about um, other physiological issues that are occurring while you have any respiratory illness, really, and kind of explain that to you. So things that are happening in your lungs when you have a respiratory illness include increased mucus production, and inflammation of the lung tissues due to an immune response, which is normal, painful, but normal. Uh, possible bronchospasm, constricting of the airways themselves. People with asthma know what this feels like. People with COPD already know what this feels like, okay? So another thing that may happen is uh, hypoxemia or having low oxygen levels. So as the mucus builds up, as the inflammation builds up, and as the bronchioles start to constrict, then that's when you have issues with gas exchange, okay? The oxygen is not able to pass into the blood and bind to hemoglobin and provide oxygen to the body, right? So these are some of the things that are happening. Now, what I would like to offer as advice and tips are go buy some tools in preparation for if you or a family member becomes sick. So some of the things I've bought even before this crisis um, include a thermometer. So go get a thermometer and check to see if you have fever, one of the hallmark presentations of this illness and most illnesses as a whole. So have this on hand. The other thing that I think is gonna be very useful is a pulse oximeter. So this is a device that you use and you put your finger in it, okay? You, it's one button, really hard to mess up. You just click the button, you put your finger in it and it will give you two values back. One is your oxygen saturation in your blood. And in a healthy individual, we want that number to be between 90 and 100. Once you hit 89, 88, 87, you need to seek medical intervention, okay? The other thing is, um, the other value that is shown on the pulse oximeter is the heart rate. So that's a really good value. We would prefer your heart rate be 100 and below, okay? So these are some of the things I would want you to buy. Now, what can you do to treat these ph physiological issues that are happening in your lungs at the time you're facing a respiratory illness? So things that I would do for my patients in the hospital include give bronchodilator treatments, aka nebulizer treatments that we usually use albuterol sulfate for, okay? We do chest physiotherapy to help with the mucus and secretions. And there's a few other things that you can do from home in order to help with that hypoxemia. If you have hypoxemia, any value 90% and below, 89% and below, okay? So for the bronchodilator, something that you can do are, um, things that you can do are purchase a over-the-counter inhaler, or you can even call your medical provider 
now and ask for a prescription for albuterol sulfate. One of the most common medications on the planet, albuterol sulfate comes in an inhaler form. There's also some nebulizers for patients who um, are asthmatics and have like significant issues with asthma. So, but for everyone else, I think an inhaler to have on hand during this health crisis would be a good, a good thing to have. So that will be to help with your bronchoconstriction. That will be just to overall help open up your lungs in the event that you become short of breath, in the event that it's just a lot of mucus, um, like blocking the airways. If you can open the airways more, that will help relieve some of that. Another thing I would suggest that people buy are essential oils. They are very good. This one's lavender and this one's peppermint. So for me personally, I found a lot of relief when I ever, whenever I combat a respiratory illness at home. Both of those provide a lot of anti-inflammatory um, features and they help with your emptying your nasal passages of mucus. And I'm not quite sure how low it goes into the lungs, the, the uh, scent and the fumes from those uh, oils, but um, I, I find a lot of benefit when it comes to helping me manage my mucus and manage my inflammation of my upper airway. Um, and I think they can provide a lot of uh, comfort for you guys. So with essential oils, if you've never used them, they are very strong and they're concentrated, okay? So it's just one drop, put it right here at the base of your nose and just, you know, start with one drop and see how you feel. They're very strong, like I said. So see how you feel. Also, just be mindful if there's like irritation to your nose or your family member's nose, just be mindful of that. Maybe you need to put it on their chin. Maybe you need to wrap a, song or a sock around their neck and then put the oil, okay? So there's other ways to do it so there's not a lot of skin irritation, okay? The other thing I would suggest buying is um, Vicks Vapor Rub, and this one's also going to really help as far as minimize the secretions and help you cough out the secretions. This one's been circulating in the Hispanic culture for quite some time, okay? So Vicks VapoRub, essential oils, and the third medication I would suggest you buy, it's an, also an over-the-counter medication, it's called Mucinex. Um, they have two options, the Mucinex regular expectorant and the DM, dextromethorphan, um, being added into the Mucinex, okay? I personally do not buy the DM brand because I do not, it's a cough suppressant and I feel like if I have mucus, I need to get the mucus out. I don't want to suppress the cough. The point of the DM is for people to get a good night's sleep without coughing all night. However, in this situation, I think it would be far more wise to cough out the mucus even if you're you know, awake at night, okay? So we don't want that to build up all night long and then in the morning really struggle to be breathing, okay? so. Mucinex, it comes in two doses, the 600 milligrams and the 1200 milligrams. I recommend starting with the 600 milligram because when I took it, I had some back pain and after I read the label a little bit more closely, it can cause a little bit of kidney issues and back pain, okay? So I would start with the lower dose and if you need more, take two pills, that's, that's the 1200. If two pills of the 600, 600 milligrams will give you the 1200 milligram dose, okay? So go buy that. And also the chest physiotherapy. So we also, in addition to all of these types of therapies and medications I'm talking to you about, there's other things we do in the hospital that I would like to share with you that you can also do at home, okay? So if you wake up in the morning, really any time of day, you can jump in the shower, put it on hot, use the steam, breathe in the steam, and then we do something called CPT, chest physiotherapy, where we, we basically pat the backs of our patients to help get the mucus, break it up, get it out of the patient's lungs so they can cough it out, okay? So what you can do, if you're doing it on yourself in the shower, you can make a fist and you can hit against your chest just like this. And you'll start to see that it will start to help break up the mucus, okay? And then you can cough out the mucus 
from there. If you're doing it on a family member, you want to, I'm sure you guys know the masseuse, right? The massage therapists who do this. So, same concept. However, you're going to cup your hands and you're going to pat on the back in an oscillatory motion just like this for your loved one or your family member, okay? So you do it like this. You put them on their side. You do one side, flip them over, do the other side. About five minutes each side. In the hospital, usually we do every four hours, every six hours, okay? Do it as needed. It's not going to hurt them. It's not going to... It's not going to make things worse, okay? It it should make things better, okay? Um, so if you want, go ahead and put like a towel in between your hands and their skin, just so like there's no not a lot of skin irritation, okay? So another thing, let's say you're an otherwise healthy individual and you bought the pulse oximeter off Amazon, right? And your oxygen saturation is 86, 87. Anything 89 and below, that's when we're concerned, okay? So let's say you're sitting at 87. What can you do at home to bring that sat up? First of all, you should be on the way to the ER, okay? Second of all, what you can do until you get to the ER, this is what you can do. You can take a breath hold, okay? Deep breath in. For demonstration so what you're doing is taking a deep breath in and holding for about three to four five seconds if possible do it based on how you feel this will temporarily change the amount of co2 you have in your blood so just listen to your body if you're getting lightheaded take a break okay i suggest doing four to five breaths in a row about three to four second breath hold for each breath and then take a break, okay? Take a break, use your pulse ox, see if it helped, see if you need to do it again. I would do three sets of five breaths um, if you can. If not, listen to your body. It will minimally, momentarily change your CO2 levels. If you get lightheaded, stop, okay? So that's one option. We do use that in the hospital uh, for patients on the vent and even for patients who are just need a little bit of supplemental oxygen okay um, so that's an option for you at home now uh, the other thing you can do to bring up that oxygen saturation is we call it proning in the hospital but for you at home it's just going to be laying in bed on your stomach face down in a comfortable position with your pillows okay that's it face down stomach on the bed and just relax take some deep breaths okay what is this doing so your heart puts pressure on your lungs when you take a breath specifically when you're laying down face up so when you lay face down stomach down aka prone that lets the heart move forward okay and off of the lungs. So it helps relieve that extra pressure that lungs have to overcome to take a breath. And we use this in the hospital, typically for very sick patients, but it'll help you at home as well, help recruit the lungs and pop open those little alveoli that can also help participate in gas exchange, thus bringing up your oxygen saturation so you won't have to sit at 85, 86, okay? You'll be able to bring it up. Now, full disclaimer, if you're short of breath, go to the emergency room. If your oxygen sat, sat is 88, 89, go to the emergency room, okay? These tools I'm giving you are in the event that there is not enough space at the hospital, okay? So let's say the hospital's full, there's not enough space. These are things you can do either way, okay? And all of the advice I'm giving is for, is to help otherwise healthy patients, okay? And then also treat your loved ones at home as well 
in the event that there is not enough space at the hospital you're going to, okay? So my goal is to just help you feel a little bit more empowered. There is something you can do. Now, you can do all of these things and it may help. It's supportive care. Um, but also keep in mind, in this situation with COVID-19, we've never seen anything like it uh, besides Spanish flu. And even if you do all the things that you can do and you do all the things I'm telling you, you Google a lot of other things you can do, and I'm sure there's plenty of other things you can also do. Um, but just remember, in this situation, it still might not be enough. Okay? It might not be enough. And... That is the situation that we're facing right now. However, if you're like me, I feel that I would prefer to do something to help my loved one, to help myself, to not go down without a fight, okay? So with that being said, I wish you guys the best of luck and I hope that these tips and tricks can help you and your family members get through this very difficult time. Okay? You all have a great day and good luck.